Hello everyone, my name is Chris, and today we're going to be going over the SparkFun Nano Beacon boards. These two boards feature the ubiquitous 2.4 GHz communications protocol that operates on such a low power that they can both run off of a single CR1225 coin cell battery for years. Now, because of this, that allows for great applications like sensor monitoring or asset tracking. Let's look at some specs. These two boards feature the IN100 Nano Beacon 2.4 GHz BT Beacon module from InPlay. The supply voltage range of each of these boards is 1.1 to 3.6 volts with an ultra low power mode of 650 nanoamps in sleep mode. Beacon modes include Google Eddystone and Apple iBeacon. You can also make your own custom data format as well. Each board also includes a single vertical quick connector that acts as a controller. This is where the similarities between the two boards ends. The Nano Beacon light board features a reset button, a single red LED for power indication, but does not include any headers. Meanwhile, the non-light version, which is meant for more production builds, does feature headers, but does not include a reset button or a red LED. Now to show us an example of how these boards work, we have Drew here to light a beacon in the darkness. Hey everyone, Drew here. And so you can see I have this nano beacon connected to a BMA400 accelerometer. And if I go ahead and put a CR1225 into the nano beacon, you can see I have the power is going to the BMA400. And when it powers up, the IN100 actually communicates over the quick connector to the BMA400 and configures it to generate an interrupt whenever a tap is detected by the accelerometer itself. And I have a wire solder between the interrupt pin and one of the GPIO pins of the IN100. And whenever that interrupt fires, it triggers the IN100 to wake from sleep mode and causes it to send out wireless packets, which are then picked up by this ESP32 breadboard connected to our new 4-in-1 USB cable. And every time I tap on this, the LED on the ESP32 lights up. And now to explain how I've configured this beacon, we can take a look at the Nano Beacon Config tool from InPlay. When you open the Nano Beacon Config tool, you'll be brought to this main page where you have all the advertising settings. You can see there's three advertising sets available. I only have one configured. And if we take a look at here, I'm using the custom format for this project. And I have it configured to give a device name of BMA400 underscore tap. And that is actually what my ESP32 is looking for. And I also have some manufacturer specific data. The hex 0505 is the default for in play. And the actual data that I have in here is the VCC voltage. This is measuring the battery voltage so I can monitor that remotely to know when I need to replace my battery. If we take a look at the advertising parameters, the only default I've changed is the advertising interval from 1000 milliseconds down to 50 milliseconds. And the advertising mode, I've changed it from the continuous advertising to the triggered advertising. Down here in the trigger sources, I have it set for the GPIO 4 pin, which is where I've soldered the interrupt pin to the BMA 400. And I've also configured it to send six advertising packets every time the interrupt is detected, just in case one of them or two of them or five of them get missed. There's two other tabs I've configured on the left as well. First, well, let's look at the GPIO tab. Here you can see I've configured GPIO4 as an input, and the pull up down resistor has been disabled because it's not needed for the BMA400, and the trigger is on the rising edge because that's what I've configured the BMA400 to do. And the latch can be disabled. Then over here on the I2C tab, this is where I've configured the BMA400 to create interrupts whenever the tap is detected. And you can see you can configure up to three I2C devices. I only have one enabled, and we take a look here. The pin defaults for clock and data are GPIO 2 and 3, which is the same for the quick connector. And down here, I've set the device address to the hexadecimal 14, which is the default for our BMA400 board. The remaining settings I have all left to the defaults. We can take a look at the I2C commands to see what is actually being sent to the BMA400. To give a brief summary of what these commands do, First, we reset the BMA400 just to make sure it's in a fresh state. Wait for that reset to complete. And then the remaining commands down here configure the BMA400 to create those interrupts on tap detection. Once you have a configuration set, you can connect up your nano beacon with a serial basic to your computer and then hit the probe button in the top right corner here. And it will list all of the comm devices that it sees available. And in this case, I happen to know that my board is connected to COM4. Default baud rate is fine, and then go ahead and hit connect. Then we can click the OK button, and to test your config, you can click the Run in RAM button, and it will send the config to the device for it to test. Note that if the board ever loses power or gets reset, then the config will be lost and you'll have to run it at random again. 
If you want your config to be persistent through power cycles or resets, then you'll need to hit the burn slash program button down here. This is a one-time program feature, so make sure that your config is correct before you program your board. One thing to be very aware of though is that I2C is not supported in the RAM mode. It must be done through the burn program, so make sure that your I2C configuration is correct before you commit to it. Something else that's really important to note about the quick connector is that power can come from two different places. By default, there's a jumper on the back that sets it to the switch zero pin on the IN100. This is a high side switch that can be configured to turn on external devices when the beacon wakes from sleep mode, such as to grab data from sensors. To do this, you must go into the Nano Beacon Config tool and click the Switch Zero Power Control checkbox over on this side here in the I2C tab. However, for this application, I have actually cut that jumper and soldered to the other side, which powers the quick connector from the battery directly. That's because I want the BMA400 to be powered all the time to generate those interrupts. And then on the back of the boards, we've also included this region to, for putting notes about your beacons. And in this case, I've put the word tap, so I know this is my tap beacon. And once you've configured your nano beacons, if you don't want to use something like an ESP32 Redboard, you can also use the Nano Beacon BLE Scanner phone app for iOS and Android, and your devices should show up in the list there. Great. Well, thank you for showing us everything, Drew. Absolutely. Uh, if you want to pick up these boards, you can get them from Sparkfun Electronics. Otherwise, be safe, be kind to one another, and happy hacking. My name is Chris and we're here back at Sparkman Electronics. Why am I starting this way? <laughs> these boards are a uh, feature the two. These boards feature the ubiquitous. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Chris and today we're here to talk about the Sparkman Nano Beacon boards. That was fine, why'd I stop? Every time, there's some words that'll go in here. We're gonna run through this. <laughs> um, once you have your Nano Beacon configured, you, if, ah, nope. Hello everyone, no. These boards are featuring the... <laughs> okay. I am out of practice. Yeah, I... Hello, everyone. Hi. How are you doing?